opposites. Yeah, so I just I just had the treasurer on, and uh, we were talking about this. Uh, he referred to to this leak so far of detail as um, as the coalition's nuclear fantasy. Um, you know, he obviously backed in his government's plan for renewables, saying they are the way of the future. Pointing to nuclear, saying the costs are going to be out of control. What do you do with waste? How are you going to afford it? All that kind of stuff. So, I mean, is, is that an example of um, the political courage you're going to need to, to be able to come up against all of that and have answers for all of that? But it is sad that it looks like we're going to see a massive scare campaign from the Labor Party on this, uh, rather than actually looking at the fact that taking a technology-neutral approach uh, to how Australia assesses its energy mix is a sensible thing to do. Uh, now, the Albanese government's plans involve tens of billions of dollars of, of network upgrades, uh, which is essentially big new infrastructure investments in poles and wires being built across the country, uh, whereas there is a chance that in looking at the type of work that we have considered, you'll be able to make better use of existing infrastructure rather than the enormous costs mm. and the environmental impact uh, that all of those additional new poles and wires uh, okay. require. So there are a lot of different parts to the energy mix. It's why it is complex, but Ted O'Brien has been doing uh, a huge body of work and analysis to make yeah. sure that we are taking the right and careful steps uh, to ultimately give uh, our energy market uh, a technology neutral approach uh, that can ensure that new generation technologies in the nuclear space that are zero emissions have a chance okay. of playing a role. Yeah. I'm almost out of time, Simon, but uh, I do want to ask you about this $2 billion investment in cleaner energy in uh, Southeast Asia while we're on the topic. Is that a worthy investment the PM's going to announce today? A few quick points there, Pete. Uh, firstly, it uh, makes enormous sense and great opportunities for Australia to grow and strengthen two-way investment ties with Southeast Asia. Nicholas Moore, who we used in government, has uh, done uh, important work with the Southeast Asia Economic and Investment Strategy, uh, and we really do welcome his work. The details of this fund is something that we will closely scrutinise to make sure that we understand the budgetary impacts and mm -hmm. that the government's proposal is one that does actually maximise, as Nicholas Moore would have us do, the real economic benefits to Australia as well as our South East. OK, Africa. and just um, finally in 30 seconds, if you can, uh, the Malaysian PM uh, was a quite a strong rebuke yesterday, um, basically, you know, suggesting that we're forcing our China issues onto them. Are we? No, look, Australia's position is not one to seek to force any nation to choose between others. Uh, it is one where we want to ensure that the sovereignty of all nations within our region is respected uh, and respected in ways where uh, all can have their territorial boundaries respected, uh, the international laws and rules respected, including the international law of the sea, uh, and uh, all are not facing undue interference uh, in their own nations. Okay. So working together towards those objectives uh, is at the core of certainly our approach and needs to be at the core of Australia's approach. That's the Shadow Foreign Minister, Simon Birmingham. Thanks for your time as always, Simon. We'll chat to you soon.